All right. Hey guys, it's Miss Lastly and Miss Marker, and we are here for day two of exponential equations. Um, today we're going to look at uh, exponential equations and solving for X and doing crazy things like changing our base numbers and blah, blah, blah. So um, I think it's kind of a fun day. I always prefer doing stuff algebraic over graphing. You guys know this. Um, and last video was all about graphing, which was super lame. So today this one should be a little bit better. OK, so first off, we need to recap some of our exponent rules because just based on some of the stuff I've seen on, say, tests and quizzes, I noticed not all of us know our exponent properties, even though we're now in unit three, we still maybe don't know our exponent properties. So let's we're going to recap some of the important ones that you guys definitely need to know in order to do these problems. First off, a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So when you are multiplying things that have the same base, you add their exponents. All right, so this would give us a to the power of m plus n, all right, which is different than when you raise a number to an exponent. So uh, versus, right, this is when I see you guys get confused all the time. So if I have a to the m and I raise it to the power of n, we multiply our exponents in this case, all right? When it's multiplying two bases, we add the exponents. When we have one base with an exponent and we raise it to a power, that's when you multiply, all right? We also have the negative exponent rule. So if you have um, something to a negative exponent, that's one over a to the power of m. So you just inverse it and it makes it a positive um, number. And then we also have the last one is our division. So a to the power of m over a to the n. This is when we subtract our exponents. All right, so those are the four exponent rules that you will need in order to do these types of problems. OK, so um, solving these exponential equations. So if you take a look down at our two example problems that we're going to do, those look pretty intense. All right, so there is a property that we have to look at first that's going to allow us to do these equations. And that property says that if you have some number raised to an exponent equal to that same number raised to a different exponent, well, based on logic, since we have an equal sign in between, if A is the same number, that means X and B have to be equivalent to each other. So therefore, X has to equal B. OK, so that is our equivalent basis property. So if we have equal bases, then our exponents must also be equal to each other. All right, so we're going to use that property when we're solving these equations. We're also going to use this next technique, which is changing the base of our numbers. All right, so we're going to kind of just do an example. So if I have the number 200, nope, I lied, 16. 200 was too big. All right, 16 to the power of 2. All right, well, 16 squared, this is where the 200 number came from, equals 256. Okay, but I know that I can change up that 16 to be a different base number. All right, what is something that you can think of that also is 16 um, when we're thinking about raising into a power? So, Ms. Margaret, what do you think? What, what can make 16 that's being raised to a power? Uh, 4 squared. Yeah, so we can actually say that 16 squared can be rewritten as 4 squared mm -hmm. to the power of 2, right? So all we did was we changed 16 to be 4 squared. We kept the power of 2 on the outside, right? Using our exponent rules, this becomes 4 to the power of 4, which if you use your calculator, guess what this is? It's also 256, right? Well, we can even do it again. So instead of using four as our base number, we can also use two as our base number. So if we want to get really, really small base number, we can because two to the power of four is actually 16. So I can rewrite 16 as two to the power of four. I still have that power of two on the outside, all right, because that didn't go away. Um, but this is now 2 to the power of 8, which 
if you plug that into your calculator, guess what you get? 256. 256. <laughs> 256. All right, so that's what, we mean by, that's what I mean when I say we can change the base number. So if you have a base number that can be rewritten as something else raised to a different exponent, you're allowed to change that. We didn't break any math rules. We still have 256 all the way down. We just were able to rewrite it so that we had a different base number, which is going to come in handy when we're using that equivalent basis property to get equal bases. So we got to do a little bit of math magic. All right. So let's get into then these two example problems. So these are what you're going to see. So we have these equations where we have a bunch of stuff up in exponents and then we have these base numbers. All right, so let's start with number one. All right, so we have 64 to the power of X plus three equaling 16, one minus three X. All right, we need to figure out what X is, but in order to do that, we do need to get our base numbers to be the same. So we need to make sure that 64 and 16 are written so that they have the same base number. All right, now there's a couple different numbers you could choose. Like we said, 16 can be broken down into four or can be broken down into two. For this equation, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. I'm going to go with four just because I think it seems easier. All right, so 64. I can rewrite 64 as four to the power of three, right? Four cubed is 64. Oh, let me zoom in. Do, do, do. Okay, cool. All right, it looked a little tiny. All right, so 64 is four to the power of three. So I can change 64 to four to the power of three. I still have the X plus three over here on the outside. All right, but I was able to change that 64. All right, equals. We're gonna do the same thing with 16. All right, 16 we know can be rewritten with a base of four if it's to the power of two. So see 16, I don't know why I can't say 16 today. All right, it's four squared, but it also still has that exponent of one minus three X. So all we did was rewrite 16 so that it was a four squared. Now, we're almost done. We do have equal bases, but what we need to do next is we need to kind of distribute that number on the inside. So we need to multiply by the three over here, and we need to multiply this by the two over on this side. So that's going to give us four to the power of three X plus nine. All right, when we distribute, make sure you're distributing to everything equals four to the power of two minus six X. All right. Now that we have that, we have our equal bases, we have our exponents now all one piece instead of like a two piece kind of situation. What we can do using this property right here is we can take our exponents and we can equal them to each other, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So we can say that three X plus nine has to equal two minus six X. And then we just solve it like we would any other equation. So add six X. That's going to give us 9x plus 9 equals 2. Subtract 9. 9x equals negative 7. Divide by 9. And x equals negative 7. You're off screen. Oh, cool. Thanks. Ta da. There we go. All right. So we end up with final answer x equals negative 7 ninths. All right. Let's do one more problem. OK, so second one. Now this one starts a little bit easier because you have um, you have a, just a 32 on one side that doesn't have an exponent, so we don't have to worry about like distributing. We are going to have to change that base number, all right? but at least it's just a 32. There's nothing else that we really have to worry about over there. All right, but before we can do any of that, we do need to make sure that we combine our um, left hand side, right? Because if you if you look up, it's one base equals one base. So you can't have multiple pieces here. So we do need to make sure that before we start changing our bases that we do condense, right? And combine our like terms. 
All right, so using our exponent properties that we had up at the top, if we're multiplying like bases, then we add the exponents. So this is going to become 2, ooh, come back, 2 to the power of 1 minus 3n plus 2n minus 2. All right, so we have to add our two exponents. All right, so when we're multiplying bases, we add our exponents. All right, equals 32. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and combine my like terms. So I have 2, negative 3n plus 2n is negative n, and then 1 minus 2 is going to give me negative 1. All right, so I just combine my like terms and my exponent um, to get negative n and then minus 1 equals 32. Okay, now that we've condensed, we can go through and we can change the 32 so that it has a base of 2. All right, so if you don't know what um, 2 to the power of what has a um, has, makes 32, it's a little bit of guess and check. Um, da, da, da. I think it's 2 to the power of 5, but I'm going to double check. 2 to the power of 5. That was a good guess. It is 2 to the power of 5. All right, so 32 is equal to 2 to the power of 5. All right, now since there's nothing else um, in the exponent with 32, I don't have to do any kind of distributing. It's just 2 to the power of 5. Um, so now I'm at the point where I have equal bases. So I can equal my exponents. So negative n minus 1 has to equal 5. All right, add 1. Negative n equals 6, divide by negative 1, and n equals negative 6. All right, that is our notes for today. Um, just remember, when you're doing these equations on your homework, a couple things to remember. Number one, you have to make sure you know your exponent rules. All right, so if you don't, they're at the top of this OneNote page. They are also in your Unit 0 um, notes that you can go look at. All right. Um, so make sure you know your exponent rules. Make sure that you are condensing like we did in number two before you try and change your base. So you need to make sure that it's one piece equals one piece. Otherwise, you can't go forward. OK. Um, and you need to make sure that you're changing the base to a number that's really uh, the right number. So the biggest mistake that I kind of see people do when they're changing their base is remember, you're looking for something that has an exponent that makes for instance, like 32, it has to be 2 to a power of 5. You couldn't say that 32 is 2 times 16, like that's not going to work. Even though, yes, 2 times 16 is 32, we're looking for something that has an exponent. All right, so we're not looking for factors of 32. We're looking at rewriting it so that it has an exponent or a power of something. All right, so keep that in mind as you are doing your problems. All right, but that is it for this notes video. Hopefully you guys found it super helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye guys.